With breaking news happening now, this is Wave 3 News. Breaking right now, a man's dead, shot and killed early this morning. The shooting happened just before 3 on West Muhammad Ali Boulevard near South 11th Street over in the Russell neighborhood. Right now, police don't have a suspect or a motive. This death coming as another man is hurt after a house fire. This happening just after 11 o'clock last night at 30th Main Streets in Portland. The home may have been converted into apartments. Fire crews say they had to rescue one person who was inside. We have multiple crews working to bring you more on these stories, so stay tuned here on Sunrise for Kayla Vanover and Julian Glover's reports on the homicide and the fire coming up just ahead. Expect more right now. You're watching Wave 3 News. Good morning, everyone. Here's our shrine to everything NCAA madness. Sweet 16 games kicking off the madness. Uh, 16 games, rather, and setting the stage for the rest of the field, including the Cards and Cats, both in action in Indianapolis today. We're bringing you team coverage from just up 65 in the Hoosier State as the teams get ready for all of the fun of the big dance. As you've been tuning into all the basketball games yesterday, uh, not too many bracket busters so far. If you sort of uh, played by the seeding, you did pretty good yesterday. Yeah, that's the big story. Uh, ESPN reporting it was just a lackluster first round. Middle Tennessee, we all know, uh, upsetting Minnesota, but they were probably seated higher uh, than they should have been anyway. Exactly. So uh, they were favored to win that one anyway. Expect more right now. You're watching Wave 3 News. Good morning. Thanks for joining us for Wave 3 News Sunrise here at 530. A busy morning already in store. Lots of school closures rolling in on the bottom of your screen and, of course, on Wave3.com. Yeah, most notably, JCPS. Julian and I have always wanted to be in charge of the Trimark system. We got that, We got it right? today. Look at we're in the central <laughs> headquarters here. We've got Sharon out in live drive showing the road conditions. Kayla right behind us with the school situation here, especially with JCPS. Brian with the roads, which are deteriorating in some spots. Let's start you off with meteorologist Christy Dutton. They're telling you where the snow's falling right now, where it's headed, how much we're going to get. Expect more right now. You're watching Wave 3 News. Good morning. It's 530. Thanks for joining us here on this Friday. I'm John Bull. Got some big headlines for you this morning. Kayla Vanover on a bill that could change the way busing's been done at JCPS. Julian Glover in the Alert Center with a story on a police officer who was shot and possibly saved by bystanders. And sharing you a little later on, we'll bring you more on the Indiana man on the FBI's most wanted list who's now behind bars 20 years almost after he abducted a girl. Those stories are coming up, but first, let's get you outside here. What a beautiful day it was yesterday. Things changed fast. When are they going to change back? Because, Christy, I kind of liked April. From AK-47s to bullets so powerful they could pierce an officer's vest. Just some of the weapons being taken off the streets of Louisville. Detectives working with the community to try to take back your streets. First, they go to the crime hotspots. These red dots here that they update weekly. There are so many guns out there in the hands of people who should not have them. In the last two years, LMPD's 9th Mobile Division has seized more than 1,200 guns. Pictures of them right here. 44% of those were seized off of convicted felons. 200 others were stolen. The division's Major Billy Hibbs says criminals now seem to have acquired a finer taste when it comes to their new weapons of choice, something that didn't used to be the case. We saw a lot of weapons that were that were inexpensive, they were cheap, they weren't in the best condition. We're seeing really high quality, strong, effective weapons. He's talking about some high priced weapons as well as a shotgun with a collapsible stock making it easier to hide right there. And then the, the Mac 11 submachine gun, he says, showing up more. Major Hibbs says they've seized several small, easily concealed handguns that frequently use bullets that pierce through a vest. To see more from our investigation, head over to Wave3.com or download the Wave3 News app. Now, Borden Indiana schools closed today because of power outages and blocked roads after storms hit yesterday in wave country. Here's a map of the counties that uh, sustained damage. The National Weather Service has confirmed one tornado and EF2 near Ireland and Du Bois County. Here's a look at what was left behind. Cleanup is underway after severe storms left this damage behind in several counties around here and all around Kentucky. Let's take a look here. Air 3 giving us a look at what's left behind. Trees snapped in half, others uprooted from the ground. A roof was ripped off a garage and several other homes were damaged. Now, lightning could be to blame for a fire that damaged a storage facility in Bardstown. This photo from the Kentucky Standard, the fire started about 2 yesterday morning on Filiatro Lane. 
Witnesses say they heard a loud boom before they saw the flames. The business is now considered to be a total loss. In Washington County, a look at the mobile home we told you about on sunrise during our severe weather coverage yesterday morning. After it was ripped off its foundation, flipped over on its side, there it is. It's on Sellers Lane in New Pekin. Firefighters had to rescue three people, cutting them out of the home. Luckily, they only reported bumps and bruises, but most of their belongings were destroyed. This damage here in our area here is a part of a sprawling recovery effort across the Midwest. Here's a look at some of the damage they're cleaning up in uh, LaSalle County up in Illinois, another one of uh, the multiple states that were hit by tornadoes yesterday. Julian's been following some of the damage across the region. He's over in the Alert Center with the very latest. And good morning to you, John. Lots of cleanup and recovery all over the country uh, as they deal with scenes like this. This is a Perryville, Missouri in, uh, in the aftermath of those severe weather outbreaks all across the nation. All right, 514 now. Three separate nightclub shootings here, all with big developments this morning. Let's begin in San Francisco. The wife of the Pulse nightclub shooter, Omar Mateen, is expected to be in court today after she was arrested in the Bay Area. Authorities say Noor Salman is facing charges related to aiding and abetting Mateen's material support devices and obstruction of Justice Salman. Apparently gave police conflicting accounts about what she knew about her husband's intentions in the hours leading up to last year's attack. And she also told investigators she knew her husband bought the guns he used to kill 49 people and injure more than 50 others at the nightclub in Orlando. Now, overseas, police here in Istanbul arrested the man they believe was behind the New Year's Eve attack in Istanbul. 39 people were killed at the Rainia nightclub and police have been on the manhunt for the suspect ever since. According to Turkish media, police believe the attack was carried out by a lone shooter. They have said this morning the man in custody has confessed to carrying out the attacks. And in Mexico, authorities still trying to figure out who was behind the shooting at this nightclub here near Cancun that killed five people. 15 others were wounded in the attack at the music festival, which is popular with foreigners. Julian Glover is following this one in the Alert Center, so we're learning this morning that an American was among the killed. Uh, John, that confirmation came from the U.S. Embassy in Mexico this morning from a tweet saying Mexican authorities have confirmed the death of a U.S. citizen. Uh, they fell short of identifying that person, but family members have done that for us this morning. A uh, picture also circulating. This is 18-year-old Alejandra Villanueva. Protests happening all over the country following President Trump's executive order banning travel from seven Muslim majority countries. Here are the activists in New York, Boston, Philadelphia, Los Angeles right down here. The protesters uh, even formed here in Louisville. Dozens of people gathered here at Louisville International Airport Sunday to protest Trump's order. Julian is over in the Alert Center now with more on the order that has prompted everybody to take action. Yeah, good morning to you, John. As candidate Donald Trump, he campaigned on banning Muslims from entering the country. Now as President Trump, he's fallen short of that. But that executive order last week concerning immigrants is still causing a big stir both at home and across the world. The President still to come this morning. More on what local religious leaders have to say about this immigration ban. Well, our, our local team stumbling here into the tournament. It's got some big final matchups this weekend. U of L, UK, and IU all in action tomorrow. First up, UK down in College Station. They're going to take on Texas A&M. They're heading in, coming off uh, getting that win over Vandy, but they were way down in that game and had to come way back. Uh, tip off set for noon. Also a noon start, the Hoosiers in Columbus taking on Ohio State. They've lost six of their last seven, including the most recent fall to the Big Ten regular season champ Purdue. And here are the highlights, or should we say lowlights, from uh, U L's last matchup with Wake Forest. They lost 88 to 81. They take on the Fighting Irish at the Yum Center, try to get back on track at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. That means uh, men's ACC tournament underway next Tuesday. Lauren here, the women's ACC tournament's already underway. Yeah, they're playing hard. How does Myrtle Beach sound right now? Ooh, Better nice. than Louisville in the, yeah. the snow we dealt with overnight. Yeah, U L women in Myrtle Beach this morning. The ACC tournament tipped off for them yesterday against Clemson. Asia Durr had 17. The cards jumped out to a 20-2 lead. Maisha Hines-Allen added 17 in a 68 to 46 blowout. U of L win this one. They are now 26 and 6. It's hard to find another Asia Dare. Oh my so, gosh. My, come on. Come all, on. all the credit to Asia. She's she's keeping this team together and we need her to, you know, continue to play strong through the rest of this tournament so we can hopefully win it. 
The Cards face number four seed NC State today at 11 o'clock in the quarterfinal. The Wolfpack won the regular season meeting by two on a last second shot in the KFC Yum Center. Two teens and a three-year-old all shot yesterday. Coming up this morning, what we know about each case and the children involved in these scary situations. Total of five shootings overnight that sent six people to the hospital in a violent time here in Louisville with one shooting victim here dying this morning. The latest on all these investigations just ahead here on Sunrise. Expect more right now. You're watching Wave 3 News. <laughs> minute goal leads to this late night celebration. Lou City FC are champions this morning, bringing home the USL Cup. We are live at Slugger Field all morning long. You can see behind us Louisville Slugger Field getting ready for a lot of celebrating going on today. All around us. We're lit up in purple. You this like is it? festive. There's going to be a lot of happy people around work today as all the fans finally get their reward with a championship. Good morning. I'm John Bowles. And I'm Lauren Jones. Let's check in with meteorologist Brian Good here at 6 o'clock this morning, getting you out the door for all the folks that are going to be sporting purple like you, my friend. And there will be a lot of people probably slow to get out of bed today because they were up pretty late last night celebrating. You know, soccer fan base is so different than other sports. It's uh, real exciting to watch. Another pool update today. is coming up later in this half hour. All right, big story we're following here this morning, taking a look at five different shooting scenes across Louisville. Six people were shot, including two teens and a three year old. Our team covering every angle of this violent stretch here in the city, starting with the latest shooting. Two people shot. We have learned this morning one of those victims has now died. Shooting happened just after 10 last night outside of the Family Dollar on Winkler Avenue. LMPD said a man and a woman were shot inside a vehicle that crashed into the store there. Both were taken to University Hospital. We we are told that man died overnight. The woman expected to survive. No word on what led up to this shooting, but if you have any information about it, you are asked to call 574-LMPD. Okay, Map here with a look at three of the five shooting scenes. These marking where children were shot in yesterday's violence. Caleb Van Meter live at LMPD, so let us know how the kids are doing right now this morning. Yeah, well, of the three shot, we know that two of them were teenagers. The other was a three year old police telling us that three year old actually shot himself in the head. And as of this morning, he's in grave condition. But those two teens are expected to be OK. The first of the three shootings we're for now we're reporting live at LMPD headquarters. Kayla Van Meter, Wave 3 News. And an update to that sixth shooting yesterday. Police say the man shot in South Louisville is a pizza delivery driver. That happened around 7 in the 3800 block of Craig Avenue. That's in the Jacobs neighborhood. Metro Police telling us that the driver was called to a home. When he arrived, he was robbed and shot. The shooter then ran away. Police still looking for him this morning. That victim was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. Of course, you can get all of the breaking news alerts sent right to your phone. All you have to do is download it. Go to your app uh, store on your phone, download it for free, and you'll get updates as we get them as well. well. Today, the man accused in the death of an LMPD officer is expected to be back in court. Police were chasing Nathaniel Woods through Portland in March when he crashed into Officer Nick Rodman's cruiser, killing the officer. Woods is facing several charges, including murder and DUI. He's being held on a million dollars cash bond. All right, let's switch gears. Some good stuff now. The city celebrating with Purple Pride this morning. And a game that went well into the night. Louisville City FC finally champions uh, last night. Wake Train News reporter Sharon Ube live at Slugger Field this morning. Obviously, where the game was held, uh, big time to be a Lou City fan. A lot of excitement going on, Sharon. Yes, and it's a great morning for all those fans out there. And even if you're not a fan, it's also a great morning for the city. So all this effort that the Lucid City fans have put in has finally paid off. And also the rallying that the city has encouraged also paid off as well. Let's break down the game for you themselves about what this means for them and also what it means for the city. Live at Slugger Field, Sharon you Wake 3 News. Now plans are in the works to build Louisville City its own stadium in Butchertown. Under the agreement, the city would spend $30 million to buy 40 acres of land off I-64 and develop it. The team's owners would commit to spending $130 million on the stadium project, which also includes a hotel and retail space. Last week, the city signed off on a tax increment financing district for it. Now needs approval from the state. 608 here just ahead, the new video that has brought charges to frat members at Penn State accused of hazing a pledge. The video allegedly showing what happened to that pledge and what led to the death. 
And explosive new allegations this morning facing two Navy SEALs after a third dies while they were wrestling in Mali, while they're now accused of killing their fellow service member. That story coming up. Expect more right now. You're watching Way 3 News. Good morning. Thanks for joining us for Way Through New Sunrise here at 530. A busy morning already in store. Lots of school closures rolling in on the bottom of your screen and, of course, on Wave3.com. Yeah, most notably, JCPS. Julian and I have always wanted to be in charge of the Trimark system. We got that. We got it right? today. Look at we're in the central <laughs> headquarters here. We've got Sharon out in live drive showing you the road conditions. Kayla right behind us with the school situation here, especially with JCPS. Brian with the roads, which are deteriorating in some spots. Let's start you off with meteorologist Christy Dutton. They're telling you where the snow's falling right now, where it's headed, how much we're going to get. That's right, and we've already seen some of that snow already starting to collect in some areas, already covering the ground there in Clark County. Okay. Now, and Brian, once we get that snow out there, this can wreak havoc on the roads for folks trying to get to work. You got it. It is side roads, untreated. Those are the ones most at risk here this morning. We're watching our traffic cameras right now from Trimark, and traffic in the metro is certainly uh, increasing, but uh, no snow showing up at least on our scans, but we're going to look and see how the sensors are looking. Come up in a few more minutes, guys. Okay, they just got off the winter break. Now they're going <laughs> to be off school again here. As you see at the bottom of your screen, a lot of school districts off, including first snow day of the school year for JCPS. Class is going to be closed there today. Yeah, we heard from one of the uh, spokespeople yesterday, and they said when you wake up in the morning, you're either going to hear it's closed or it's open, and now we know it's closed. This morning we have Wave 3 News reporter at uh, Kayla Vanover at the Lincoln Elementary School Force this morning. Morning, it will remain closed today. Kayla, uh, any snowflakes where you are so far? You know what, I think literally in the past 30 seconds have may have seen a few, but that's the first that we've seen as we've been out here this morning. As you said, we've been on standby with JCPS since yesterday, and it's not uncommon for them to do or make the call that they did today because they typically do err on the side of caution. For now, reporting live in Louisville, Kayla Vanover, Wave 3 News. Okay, first major snow event of the year. The new Lewis and Clark Bridge is going to be put to the test this morning. Wave 3 News reporter Sharon Yu is live in Live Drive Force this morning, checking it out. Out, Sharon, uh, we know that they do a lot of treatment ahead of time when they expect some snow to come through. Yes, absolutely. Well, preparations began yesterday morning. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet already went around all these different counties to make sure that the interstates are brined and ready for this morning's potential snowfall. And as you can see here, we are crossing the Lewis and Clark Bridge live now, and it will be put to the test this morning. Kentucky responsible for the roads leading up to the tunnels and uh, Indiana also responsible for the bridge itself, which is where we are coming from at this point. The are now reporting live and live drive. Sharon, you wave three news. Okay, Sharon 536 here. Now's the perfect time to download the Wave 3 News and Weather app. We know you're busy and having the most up-to-date info at your fingertips will make your day easier. Boy, the radar helps a lot too as you can kind of see the spots where the snow is heavier and where it's not hitting like the situation we have unfolding right now. Expect more right now. You're watching Wave 3 News. A huge accident on I-65 happening this morning, shutting down all lanes for an hour and still causing delays right now. Kayla Vanover is live on the scene. She's going to bring us the latest developments on this situation with a semi that brought out a bomb squad. And Kentucky's darkest day after years of planning it's finally here. We're bringing you team coverage of the solar eclipse today. Meteorologist Brian Good is live in Hopkinsville this morning at Ground Zero. We'll talk to him in just a second from the point of greatest totality. But first, let's check in with meteorologist Christy Dutton because Christy today is all about cloud cover. Mm -hmm. That's what we will be watching because we can't be stuck behind these clouds when uh, the eclipse is going on or it'll be all for nothing. We won't be able to see it. So the good news is we are, even though we will have some clouds around, we're expecting plenty of breaks in those those clouds crossing our fingers that most of the area will be able to see that eclipse. We'll take a look at uh, your seven day coming up. Okay, finally, you get to utilize those glasses we were handing out for hours at the Kentucky State Fair on Saturday. Or some of you may be even buying them on Craigslist. Yeah. We're seeing them going on uh, Craigslist here this morning. Let's check in live with meteorologist Brian Good. He is in Hopkinsville this morning getting ready for the big event. You're really at ground zero right now, the point of greatest totality. Well, we're, we're, we're close to it, and right now we're in uh, downtown Hopkinsville, where this is where a lot of the festivals have been going on since Friday. Country music bands, Tracy Lawrence was down here performing as well, food vendors, basically like the State Fair. 
in a small town area. So, Hopkinsville is certainly on the map today. And uh, this is just the beginning, guys. Over the next uh, eight to nine hours, things are going to be a little wild here in southern Kentucky. Much more on this coming up a little bit later on at this half hour. John and Lauren, I'll send it back to you. All right, Brian, thank you very much. We'll check back in with you soon. And, of course, join us today for special coverage of Kentucky's Darkest Day. We are live from 2 to 3 this afternoon covering the height of the eclipse in both Louisville and in Hopkinsville. You can also join us at the Big Four Bridge starting at 11 o'clock. Christy, Ryan Hoke, and myself will all be there. Okay, got a breaking news update now on that crash we've been following this morning on I-65. At one time, all lanes, both northbound and southbound, were closed after a semi-hauling Brooks cra Books crashed uh, near the Fern Valley Road exit. The crash was reported about 1.30 this morning. Way 3 News reporter Kayla Vanover live on the scene. And Kayla, heavy equipment clearing the scene now. Yes, and they're doing a very good job. They're getting this cleared rather quickly. We do know that the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, along with Metro Safe, initially reported this as a deadly crash involving a semi full of explosives. When we arrived on the scene, I'll show you what we found. Boxes and boxes and boxes of books. No explosives here, so that is the good news. And, of course, we'd rather report this, what we see now. As we receive more information about what caused this serious crash, we'll be sure to update you on Way3.com, on our Way3 mobile app, and right here on Way3 Sunrise. For now, reporting live on I-65 northbound, Kayla Vanover, Way3 News. Okay, now breaking right now on Sunrise here at 606, police investigating a shooting in southern Indiana. Julian Glover with the breaking details in the Alert Center. Good morning to you, John. We're hearing this happen in Jeffersonville. Let's zoom in very quickly, show you where it's all mapped out at 8th Street and Crestview Court here in Jeffersonville. Our crew is on the scene. Live images right now in the Alert Center. You can see uh, all of these flashing lights uh, surrounding uh, where the shooting took place right now. Not much information being released by police this well, morning. Much more to come throughout the morning. Okay, again, make sure to get all of our breaking news alerts on the Wave 3 News app. We uh, told you earlier this morning about the crash on 65 that snarled everything up. So if you got that, you avoided that mess, and that's a good thing.